I need to get down there somehow. The temple of Nephron Ka lies under our camp. Despite all efforts, that unholy site did not collapse, but sink beneath the sand. The pharaoh is long dead, his name meticulously stricken from all ancient writing. But that stage meant for blood and terror remains. The temple is said to be lightless, built to harbor all the haunters of the dark found in the very depths of our universe. Calling on the gods meant creating a bridge between our world and theirs. The terrible Aldebaran of Taurus, the Black Sun, was seen as the most important star in the night sky. Because, according to the Kitab al -Azif, it was said to be the home of that crawling chaos known as Nyalahotep. Through ancient mechanisms, it was said that the priests could open shafts channeling the light emitted by that strange stone called the Shining Trapezohedron. Several streams pooled together above the statue of that dark man would then be sent through space towards the Black Sun, a message to the gods. The gifts bestowed on the sender are completely undocumented, but often assumes to involve dark blood pacts, where souls are traded for malicious miracles. Okay, you can do this, Emily. It's the constellation Taurus. The big star is Aldebaran. Something to do with the dark man.
isn't a dream, but is a shallow pit of darkness. This is definitely where the contract is hidden, but how do I get there?
It worked.
What's happening? Acknowledge psychological trauma, break through the barriers of self-deceit, temper, manic behavior. Is this it? Is this the contract? Jeremy, how much pain and suffering you could have prevented. Emily, what are you doing? Detective, uh, how is your investigation going? Well, I still have no clue where Jeremy is, but I think I know why he's hiding. This place is full of lunatics planning to perform some kind of ritual tonight. Well, that sounds ridiculous. Or rather would have just a day ago. It gets worse. I have reason to believe they killed anyone who didn't want to go along with the plan. Detective, have you encountered any monsters tonight? I just told you, I think they killed people. Beauregard, the author, Perosi, the singer, Mr. Waits, the clerk, Mr. Chance, the gardener, they're all missing. No, I mean, have you fired your gun tonight? Of course not. They wouldn't just kill outsiders like that. It would bring too much attention. But you should keep your eyes open. So you haven't seen anything strange? Been anywhere else? What are you trying to tell me, Emily? Are you in some kind of danger? Let me drive you back to New Orleans. I think I have enough. You know, at least get the police to take a look at this case. No, I'm fine. Thank you, detective. I'll find your uncle, Miss Harwood. Just stay out of trouble. He must first acknowledge psychological trauma in order to proceed. The lying must stop so we can break through the barriers of self-deceit. Finally, temper manic behavior. Medicine has failed me. Nothing can be done to dispel the hardwood curse. Only the sacrificial dagger may release the despair from Jacob's eye. Yet, doing so would be the doom of Dasetto. Let this curse of mine be a weapon for once. I accept your demands, oh, crawling chaos. Build your prison around this godforsaken hospital. When evil has been starved, I will stay buried forever. It was almost night when Emily found herself back at Dossetto. What exactly had she been doing? And what was Detective Conby talking about? Did any of her findings make any sense? All she knew was that she wanted to figure out what the three steps to the contract entailed and how this was connected to Dr. Gray.
could just get rid of Jeremy, everything would go back to normal. That reminds me. I saw Miss Emily earlier. You remember her? You know she's Jeremy's niece. She's looking for me. That's right. She's helping us. In her own way. As long as she don't stand in the way of the mother of a thousand young. <laughs> I don't think she knows or cares about that. She just here for Jeremy. I've been more worried about that Detective Carmen fella. He been snooping around asking all kinds of questions. God, it hurts. I wish you would stop doing that. Gives me the heebie-jeebies. I need the key. going on here? It's blocked. We must have faith that Jeremy's pact with the Dark Man is a bluff. If we are lucky, our visitors will find him and prove it's all nonsense before night falls. What is true is our attempt to call on her. Too many things have happened for this evening to be in vain. Think of Jack and Cassandra, even Perosi, whose circumstances I can't understand. Grace is a goat without horns. She knows it and will play the role. You must talk to your brother, Batiste. I worry that he will fail us. Mrs. Thompson. Lunacy in the Astarte Artist Colony, a monograph by Yael Klein. In early 1909, the old Derseto plantation outside of New Orleans was turned into an artist's colony. 
Three famous European artists rented the house and the surrounding land from the owner, the Ledoux family. The colony was chiefly run by Sebastian Cortez, who was playfully dubbed the captain by his collaborators, William Argus and Heinrich Kassel. The colony existed for six years, until one day all twelve members disappeared without a trace. It is widely believed that their disappearance is connected to the disastrous hurricane that passed through on September 29, 1915, but nothing truly supports this claim. What is known is their frequent participation in New Orleans nightlife, their love for hosting parties, and their elaborate contributions to the Mardi Gras parades as the Pirates of Ponchartrain. Accounts of their lifestyle can be found in almost every gossip column. It can effectively be summed up as carefree and bohemian. In late June 1909, the name Astarte first appeared in the newspapers. Cortez said the name came to him as he was painting. There is never any claim to knowing about the ancient Phoenician fertility goddess with the same name before this time. His fellow colonist Heinrich Kassel did know, because he later produced sculptures that show clear references to ancient idols of the goddess. It's impossible to know for sure how this name suddenly made an appearance, but it is interesting because of their Seto's history. It's blocked. Mrs. Thompson, I understand the last week has been busy. Under these circumstances, I find it important to remind you that Ursetto's concerns are not a public matter, nor is it something that should upset you. Please continue your excellent work, and don't spend a thought on the death of Perosi, or, more importantly, the suicide of Cassandra Beauregard. They should mean nothing to you or the staff. I rely on your loyalty and trust that your close kinship with the Tabois siblings will keep Tercetto's secrets hidden. Dr. Gray.
I need the key. Hey, little lady, how's your evening been going? Ups and downs, I suppose. <laughs> I hear that. We all live in the life of an elevator operator. Are you all right, sweetie? Do you want to see my mask, miss? I'm making it for St. John's. Uh, how did you... Is that supposed to be my... Ow! <sighs> you should learn your place, little girl. Why are you acting this way? What did I ever do to you? Grace! Grace! I'll just borrow these. At least he's breathing. I'll just let him sleep it off. Jeremy knew that the only one who could help him now was the guest in room number three. The room seemed to have been empty for so long, but that wasn't allowed to be true. The story needed to be different. To include something from the outside, he would bring the guest back to room three and show them what was in that safe. Nine, one, three. But those were not the right numbers. That was the combination for the safe in the clerk's office. There's something missing. Detective Combe, I'm terribly sorry that my niece has pulled you into this mess. Please, with all my blessings, take her away from this cursed place. I have destroyed that eater of worlds and locked it away in the attic and retreated to a place of hiding. Tell Emily I'm safe. Tell her all the lies you can think of to make her listen. 
take her back to New Orleans. Sincerely, Jeremy. Brother, I need you to trust me. This is the most important moment in our family's history. I know you have doubts and that the terrible Mama Loa told you lies. I would never betray you. I promise. Lottie. I think Dr. Gray is in there. Maybe I can go snoop around his office then. Mr. Waits must have had a spare key to Dr. Gray's office, but where? I don't know the combination. Wait, maybe I do. Take this anymore. Sometimes, I think this place makes me worse. 
that Dossetto might be my grave. A coffin made of ostentatious architecture. A Taj Mahal for the drunken depressed. There's something about Dossetto. Something about Dr. Gray. Like we all pretend that we're here to get better. When in fact we are here to be forgotten. Are you there? No, of course Castle built the zoetrope as an exercise in animation. He is very interested in moving pictures and has even ordered an aeroscope camera for the colony. I'm looking forward to seeing what kind of phantasmagoria he will produce. For now, his zoetrope entertains me greatly. It's not the little man passing his head, while well, quite humorous, it's the spell of that flickering light as it rotates. I swear, it takes me back to my childhood in a most profound way. This, this is my room. I belong here. I recognize this view. I don't know the combination. Wait, maybe I do. this. I wrote that. The imp...
darling, I finally found that photograph from my time in France during the war. I don't expect this to be your fiancé, but it did make me think of him. What an incredible man he must have been. You were lucky in a way. He could have been a nobody and died falling into the Mississippi. Instead, he volunteered to travel across the world to fight for people in despair, dying with honor like Achilles at Troy. I am jealous of you. Or maybe him. It's all incredibly romantic. That's what I wanted to say. Please feel free to use my camera if you want to. It might cheer you up. It might bring him closer to you. Even if just in memory. Ruth. How long have I been here? 